안녕하십니까? Greetings, I'm Professor Kim Jin of St. Mary's Hospital in Daejeon Catholic University. I'm in charge of master course, in particular the basic courses included therein. Today, I'm going to talk about a treatment plan which is the most basic within the basic course. The basic lineup course is for beginners in implanted treatment. This course includes hands-on practice as well as lectures. Today, I'm going to talk about coming up with implant treatment plan via the online platform. These days, a lot of patients come in wanting consultation about implanted treatment. Those who have placed many implants, it's not a big problem, but for beginners who have just begun to place implants, it can be quite confounding as to how to come up with implanted treatment plan. I'm sure many people would have questions and concerns on this end. The most important part of implant treatment is treatment planning. Many dentists find this a very difficult in starting to provide implant treatment. We're going to look at, at implant treatment plan in detail. First, it needs to be done in top-down manner. Also, I'm going to talk about digitally driven implant treatment planning. Third, I'm going to compare the analog and digital guided ways for implant placement. Let's look into detail. Let's first talk about top-down method for implant placement. What's this about? Let's say a patient came in for implant treatment consultation. At the reception, patient's chief complaint and the basic information has been gathered. The patient is in 20s. So fairly young, in terms of implant treatment, there seems to be no major challenges. When I looked at the oral condition, one tooth was missing, number 36. I looked at overall medical history, the patient didn't have any underlying disease. And when I looked at the standard x-ray film and panoramic image, bone width and height, was sufficient and the length was sufficient as well. The patient had sufficient amount of bone. The patient was healthy. If you have never placed an implant as of yet, you may be a bit baffled when the patient says he or she would prefer implant over bridge treatment. In this case, in order to plan for implant placement in posterior missing area number 36, uh, first you need to think about the crown, which goes on the very top. Second, if you have decided upon the prosthesis, then you need to think about the size and angle of abutment which connects implant and crown. After that, you need to think about which diameter and length implant you're going to use. This is referred to as top-down method. First, you determine the crown first, second, abutment is selected, and third, implant is chosen. This is literally the top-down method. There's also the opposite concept. It is bottom-up concept. The first implant is placed and then prosthesis is determined. The master course treatment planning process centers around top-down method in which the crown is selected first. When coming up with implant treatment plan, you need to plan for crown first, followed by abutment, and then the implant. This is the top-down method. Please remember this. 
라는 것을 잊지 말아 주시기 바랍니다. Next, I'm going to talk about digital guided implant surgery, which has become more widespread these days. Those of you watching this program, how many of you know about X-ray film, which used to be used at dental clinics? What I'm trying to say is that in the past, X-ray standard and panoramic images were frequently used in the dental clinics in old days. In order to have these equipments, basically you need to have film. You also needed to have developer and fixatives for the film, you needed to have these components in place to take X-ray images for implanted treatment. These components are what your staff would worry about when they came into the dental clinic Monday morning. They would have to frequently replace the fixatives or developers. This was quite a tedious job, and if fixatives or developers got on the gown, it would change color and it would look nasty. This was cause of Monday blues to many hygienists and the staffs working in the dental clinics. For dentists, what was most uncomfortable was the lack of space to maintain the x-ray. These days, we take digital images, so there is no need for film, and you can see it immediately. You do not need to develop the film. You can also see the X-ray images taken earlier on the computer if you connect them. Digital dentistry is key these days. CBCT for dental purposes is most widespread in Korea. Patient information can now be acquired more accurately compared with the past. This is implant treatment planning based on digital guides. The advantage of digital dentistry is high accuracy and as mentioned, by replacing x-ray with digital photos, you can reduce the need for significant spaces. Also, the staff at dental clinics no longer have to worry about fixatives or developers. In the case of digital dentistry-driven implant therapy, it has become much more accurate and unnecessary work has been removed. Also, you can check information very quickly. Digital dentistry-driven implant placement is based on treatment planning using these digital techniques. The most basic is CBCT data and surface data of oral cavity. Mixture of these digital data leads to surgical guides and it will be digitally driven treatment planning. Just now we talked about top-down method. You'd come up with a crown design first and then do abutment design and so forth. Digitally driven implant treatment planning. As shown on the computer, you would add a CT data and on top of it, surface data is added. This is the treatment plan we can come up with. Let's look at the illustrations. The patient has number 36 missing in the past. You'd check the patient's medical history and chief complaint, and the dentist would order for x-ray to be taken. After checking the oral condition, implant treatment plan would be formed, but with digital dentistry, we can provide a better explanation to the patients and 
patient acceptance will increase. Basically, by using CT data, patient's oral condition can be checked more accurately. Next, CAS model is made, diagnostic wax up can also be done with digital dentistry. More people use intraoral scanners and impression materials, which require a lot of work, are now mostly unused. By using intraoral scanner, oral cavity is reproduced by using these two data, CT data and surface data combined can lead to designing and fabrication of guides, which can then be used for actual implant placement. You can use these guides to do implant placement if the patient came in in general. This is the same as x-ray. When you utilize digital dentistry using CBCT, superimposition is very important. Although you can get good data in the posterior region, that may not be so in the upper central area where images may be overlapping and we need to avoid this. That's why when you take x-ray using CT, you need to make sure that the patient does not close mouth. You need to have the patient open his or her mouth slightly in order to avoid the possibility of data being overlapped. I would like to give you this tip. Those of you who do not have CBCT, I hope once you buy the CT, you remember the fact that the patient needs to open his or her mouth slightly. You need to have the patient bite on a block to get accurate data. Second, the traditional analog way without intraoral scanner, you would have to use impression material and make model. If you have intraoral scanner as shown on the image, you can extract the surface data. If you do not have intraoral scanner, basically you need to take impression of the upper and the lower and take bite registration and send it to Austin Research Center. Then you can get the data that is necessary to make the surgical guide for implant placement. If you have intraoral scanner in your dental clinic, you can just scan it yourself and send over the data. But if you do not have intraoral scanner, you can take model and send that to the lab or Austin Research Center. There are some labs that work like Austin Research Center, but at Austin Research Center, they have this device called model scanner and using this model scanner, surface data is extracted. In this way, surface data is gathered. This is how the CT data and scan data is merged and analyzed. Implant treatment planning. This should be based on top-down method. Given the patient information, we need to determine the shape and size of the crown, and this is crown planning. You plan the crown first, and you choose the abutment that is a fit for the crown. This is followed by choosing the appropriate implant. What is important about CT data is that you can get a good sense of the important anatomical structure, so which were not clear in the panoramic images. Unlike the past, many dental clinics are subject to medical disputes and highest percentage among the disputes surround implant treatment. There are many reasons for that. What is most important in medical dispute 
are three factors. First, the dentist has responsibility to prevent medical accidents. Second, we need to provide explanation. You need to provide explanation as to what can be expected. Third is, we need to be able to refer the patient to a bigger hospital if it is beyond the scope of our treatment. These three factors are very important in preventing medical disputes. Unlike the past, with the availability of CBCT, we can get more accurate information of patients' anatomical structures in a very clear way. Just by using CT images, we can locate the inferior alveolar nerve and we can determine what size of an implant it should be placed and what should be avoided. Top-down method. We first determine the crown first. We do oral scan and gather surface data and provide a custom solution for the patient. We do this on the computer. Following that, abutment position and angle is determined. The third is implant placement avoiding important anatomical structures such as inferior alveolar nerve. This is the basic concept of top-down method and this is digital-driven treatment. Along with crown design, implant position, length, and diameter were determined. And then a guide was formed to place the implant in the desired position. After forming a top-down treatment method, surgical guide template is designed. Guide design can be formed reflecting the tooth form and the desired position. All you have to do is approve the guide design provided by Austin and then a surgical stand allowing us to place the implant in the desired position will be fabricated. Everything is done very smoothly. Appropriate digital guide is fabricated. Austin's Research Center fabricates the template based on the data provided and this is printed out using 3D printer. Surgical guides are very important in placing the implant in desired positions and depths. What is the biggest difference between analog and digital way? Analog ways. It sounds complicated, but it's the conventional way of placing implants. You take panoramic image and check the oral cavity, make incision, and you place the implant. The benefit in that is that you can check the bone quality yourself. Apart from difficulties arising from anatomical structures, so what kind of advantages are there in digitally driven implant treatment when placing an implant? The biggest benefit is accuracy. Top-down method, we designed the crown first. When implants were placed in conventional way, implants would often be placed in positions different from that of originally planned. On the other hand, if you use digitally driven implant treatment, because you already have planned for the position of the crown and placement positions are formed, you can accurately place the implant and get the expected result. If you use surgical guide, in most cases, you can do flapless surgery and reduce treatment time. You can get accurate results and a surgical time will be reduced. 
Treatment planning is the topic I've talked today. And the basics is that we need to center our treatment plan based on top-down method. And I recommend digitally driven implant treatment planning. Master Basic course is actually a lot about hands-on practice. Before COVID, we would have hands-on practice, but because of two to three years of COVID period, we were not able to do hands-on practice well. These days, we're talking about endemic. We're trying to return back to our day-to-day -day lives. In Master Basic course, you can come up with digitally driven treatment plans yourself and using the surgical stents, you can place the implant. So if you have never placed an implant or is just about to place an implant, you can utilize these opportunities to learn more and gain more experience. Through the course, I will address more detail and different cases. Thank you for watching.